And our next speaker is a born-again born again Christian conservative, originally born in the Soviet Union, and became a world-traveling professional poker player and was featured as a contestant on the CBS television show Survivor in 2016. And she recently committed her life to Christ, and she recently became an ordained minister, and she is just on fire to share the Word of God with you today. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand to your feet and greet Anna Praise be to God. Hallelujah. That was powerful, Marty. Amen. Thank you, Clay and the team, what they're doing, going around the country, preaching the good news, telling them about the truth of the gospel, what's happening in this country. You know, I was born in the Soviet Union. And I grew up hearing stories from my parents about the perils of Marxism, the perils and the evils of communism. My great-grandmother would tell my mom stories and myself stories. I mean, things like they would take away the cows and the vegetables and the garden, and people starved to death. That's what Stalin did. He copied Lenin in Ukraine. Stalin took out all of the crops in Ukraine, and 10 million people starved in one year. And I heard these stories growing up, and I was always very apolitical, but when it came to America, I was four years old, I grew up an atheist liberal, really, because I was indoctrinated in schools. I didn't hear the truth. I heard about how evil America was. And I grew up always knowing, though, that Marxism and communism is evil, so I always had that. My mom found Jesus in America, <laughs> praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I thought she was a crazy, crazy Christian. <laughs> and to be honest with you, I never thought I would be in church talking about Jesus or the Constitution. Because I really didn't understand it. But I knew that my family brought me here for better opportunities. So I'm going to fast forward. Back in 2015, I was a professional poker player, traveling the world, thought I was living the life. But inside, I was broken. I was missing a big piece of my heart. I didn't know that God filled it. I, I got on the television show Survivor. Let me tell you, <laughs> it's a real show. I know it's reality television, but you really are surviving. People ask me that all the time. Oh, it's real. There's no crafts tables. You're starving. <laughs> but praise God, I actually remember my mom and her nun friends, all her friends. She said that we're going to pray for you when you're out there. And I have to say, I kept telling my teammates, I feel my mom and her nun friends' prayers. I kept feeling such a peace the entire time. Everyone was struggling. They were starving. They were lethargic. I was like floating on a cloud. Let's get more water. Who wants to come with me? You know? And I kept saying it. I feel my mom's prayers. I feel my mom's prayers. Fast forward to come back. We filmed in 2015 and aired in 2016. I come back, you know, the Lord did a deep work in me on that island of Cambodia. I didn't know it then. I came back, my addiction to survivor was gone, because it was an addiction, a stronghold. My addiction to poker was gone. And I had a fascination to look into politics, of all things. <laughs> and I looked into and I learned about my history, and I realized these Democrats are pushing socialism. They're pushing Marxism. They're pushing communism. I started studying communism, read the Communist Manifesto, and realized there really are wolves in sheep's clothing. They sound like they're helping you, but they're actually destroying this country, the fabric and a foundation that makes America so great. But let me tell you, the forefathers made a covenant with the God Most High. You see, Israel, God said, can I be your God? America said, will you be our God? Hallelujah. Thank you. And I went deeper into politics, and I realized Satanism was real. I realized human trafficking is real, and I almost lost my mind. This is the biggest crime in the whole world, and no one is talking about it? The media isn't talking about it. There are people sacrificing babies. Are you flipping kidding me? 
And so I went down the rabbit hole and it went pretty far. <laughs> There's no end. But you know what? Listen, there's a lot of things I will never know in this world. Like we, even us, even the truth seekers, when you're looking online, there's still so much we're never going to know. We're going to know on the other side of eternity. Because God knows all things. He will reveal all things. The Bible says the truth will come out. And everything hidden will be exposed in Jesus' name. Amen. And by the grace of God, we're seeing it now in this country. And this is just the beginning. Because just like Julie Green heard the Lord say there's a great exodus this year in this country. I heard the same thing in 2020 that the, 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 the Lord said the Red Sea moment for my people and the judgment of the wicked is here. It is coming. It is time. <laughs> Praise God. So... I went down the rabbit hole and I realized Satanism was real and I cried out. I said, God, I'm starting to think you're real. I'm starting to think you're real. <laughs> if you're real, show me you're real. Because if you created the heavens and the earth and you created the mountains and the beautiful rivers, surely you can talk to a little piece of dust like me. If you love me, I want to know you. And two weeks later, I was on a Survivor tour. This is the early 2016. The show, television show Survivor was airing. It was all over. You know, it's a popular show. And all my friends are super liberal. They hate Trump. Hate Jesus. And I thought, okay, well... <laughs> We're going to know the truth because let me tell you, we're truth seekers here. But if you do not know Jesus, you do not have the whole truth. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except it be by me. So by the grace of God, I'm going to make this short. I, I go out and someone comes up to me uh, and says, hey, listen, you've been wondering if God is real. And I'm here to tell you, it's going to sound crazy. I'm a messenger of the Lord, but i got to tell you, God is real. I said, what? <laughs> Honestly, years ago, I'd been like, oh, crazy Christian, got to go. Okay, cool. But I, my ears were open. Those who have ears to hear, let them hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. So anyway, he said, you had an encounter with Jesus. You had an encounter with the Holy Spirit. I said, no, I didn't. He said, yes, you did. And I thought about it. I had an encounter. I didn't know it was the Holy Spirit. And back when I was 18 years old in Jerusalem at the Western Wall. I was standing there when I was 18. I got a bunch of my high school friends to come on this free trip. I'm half Jewish. On a free birthright trip to see Israel. We get there. I'm standing there. My mom gave me those prayers you put in the, in the wall. And um, I was standing with my friend. I said, look at these idiots praying to a God who doesn't exist. Mm-hmm, atheist, stubborn, little idiot I was. <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I, I'm a, it's just I'm, I, the best day of my life, the most profound moment. I literally felt a spirit come sit and fill me. I can pinpoint every emotion, joy, peace, happiness, euphoria. Honestly, holy pleasure being one with the Lord. Let me tell you, earth can't even compare to the euphoria when it comes to knowing the Lord. Which, <laughs> Hallelujah. We're going to experience all of eternity for those that know Jesus. If you don't know Jesus, say, Jesus, I want to know you too. Become real to me. Forgive me of my sins. Come and introduce yourself to me. Let me tell you, he will. If you humble yourself and you ask him, those that seek him will find him. But then I get saved. Hallelujah. All the depression, all the anxiety comes off. I literally felt it lift off of me. I felt free. I was looking at the sky. It was blue. The birds were chirping. The trees were more alive. I said, Lord, I, I want to, I, I need to get involved. I need to tell everyone about you. And better yet, I actually also, well, not better yet, there's nothing better than that, but I also want to help this country, Lord. I want to work and fight for this country. What do I do? And by the grace of God, I got a phone call a few weeks later by a man you probably heard of, Mr. James O'Keefe. <laughs> and I went undercover for nine months back in 2018. I infiltrated a lot of Democratic campaigns. I met with IRS agents, EPA agents, communist Department of State agents. Two of them got fired from one of my investigations by the grace of God. Thank you, Jesus. 
Let me tell you, it was actually one of the easiest jobs they ever had was infiltrating DSA, Democratic Socialists of America, the DC chapter, because I didn't have to brush my hair, I didn't have to wear any deodorant. <laughs> I, I still stuck out like a sore thumb, but it was pretty easy. And I'm standing and talking to a Stalinist, a Leninist, a Trotskyist, face to face, and I'm shocked. They actually believe this nonsense. And I'm thinking, these are the same people, the same ideology that destroyed my native country. I am not going to let this happen in this country. So, amen. All of us. <laughs> By the way, I want to say that you, everyone in the audience, is you are just as important to the mission as the people up here. I am no different than you. The Lord has no favorites. He loves each, actually having favoritism is a sin, the Bible says. So if you have a favorite child, you better repent. <laughs> but I'm standing face to face, and you know what? The Lord changed my heart in that moment. Because I honestly thought, my enemy are the Democrats. My enemy are the communists. My enemy is Antifa. My enemy are the illegal immigrants. Those are my enemy. Is what I thought. And the Lord showed me something I never thought I would see. I, re I got to spend a lot of time with them. Most of the time, they're F-bombing Trump. <laughs> By the way, I, I, I realized uh, while the survivor was on and I became a Christian, I realized I have to endorse candidate Trump. I have to endorse this man. I'm going to lose all my friends. I'm going to lose all my fans. But this country is more important than my reputation. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so I was actually, by, by God's grace, was the only person to endorse candidate Trump from reality television. Publicly. I got a lot of messages privately, and I said, you need to grow up here. <laughs> you need to stand up for this country. I have no respect for cowards. I have respect for the humble and the bold. Amen. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, the Lord changed my heart, and I'm going to end with this. I realize in that moment, spending so much time again with communists, socialists, Democrats, I can pinpoint, by the way, in the DSA meetings, which, side note, little funny story, you know, you have these meetings and everyone takes turns before it starts to get up and say, her, you know, she, her, Jennifer, or he, him, you know, they, them. So I'm sitting there the whole time thinking, don't say he, she, don't say he, she. <laughs> say, you know, so it was the craziest, craziest meetings I've ever been to. You know, defund the police, don't call the police when there's a crime, just ignore them. Crazy. So anyway, I'm talking to them and, and the Lord really lifted the veil because I realized most of them, 95% of them, were actually, they're good people. And, and the Bible says there's no one good except the Father, but you know what I mean. Kind-hearted people want to help this country. They love this, they, they want to help. I don't want to say they love this country, but they want to help. You see, a lot of times I've noticed the left preaches love without truth. And a lot of times I see Republicans preaching truth without love. Paul said, what does it profit you if you preach the gospel without love? What does it profit you if you prophesy without love? You have to do it in love. The Lord lifted the veil. Because here I am face to face with a Trotskyist, and I realize, oh, he's not my enemy. He's blind. He doesn't know. He doesn't see. And Ephesians 6 says, we battle not against humans. We battle against principalities. Spirits, wickedness in high places, my friends, they are not our enemy, and you have to forgive them. You know how hard it is to pray for resident Joe Biden, but I do. I have to. He is the resident of this country, hopefully, for not far too long. <laughs> Jesus, we need a great exodus. Hallelujah. But we pray for them. We forgive them. You can pinpoint, I could pinpoint the radicals in there. There are two or three. The rest of them are blind. You come to them in love. It's not easy, but you come and you preach the gospel. When they have a heart change, that's when the veil lifts, and that's when they realize this country is the best country in the world. We cannot do it in our own flesh. You have to have the Holy Spirit 
to continue holding the torch that our forefathers had when they started this country. You cannot do it without the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you, you will not make it in the days ahead with what they have planned without Jesus. So you say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. I want to know you. Come into my heart. Be the Lord and Savior of my life. Guide me. Protect me. Let me activate me. I want to serve you in this great country in Jesus' name. And he will answer you. He will meet you. He will find you. He will give you eternal life. And he will give you the purpose, the mission, the will, the destiny he has for you before the creation of the world. You will have God Almighty with you, and no one can come against you in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you guys. I bless you. I have a booth. If you want to say hi, come say hi. Thank you, Clay. I love you. One more time. What's it for Anna Kate? All right.